Hi everyone, it's Raina. So I am doing a series on Venus in the different signs, and now I'm doing Venus in Scorpio. And I actually know a little bit about this because I happen to live with somebody who is a Venus in Scorpio, and he and I are both Sun and Sagittarius, but I have Venus in Aquarius, and he has Venus in Scorpio. So it's quite a contrast because Scorpio is a very intense sign and Aquarius is a very detached sign. So the depending on what the sun sign is, it can actually lighten up this Venus and Scorpio placement. And I will talk about that in a second, but I did want to talk about what Venus means altogether. Venus is the goddess of love and beauty. So obviously it connects with love and it's how you love. It's your love nature. It's also how others perceive you in terms of love. So if somebody thinks you're like a free spirit type of a lover, that might be like a Venus in Sagittarius. Or if somebody thinks of you as a very efficient lover, you know, somebody who's very nondescript, that might be Venus in Virgo. Venus in Scorpio is a very mysterious type of person in some cases, maybe in a lot of cases, a very a deep kind of a person when they are in love and also somebody who is all-consuming. Maybe you could even say a little bit extreme when it comes to love. Venus is in its detriment in the sign of Scorpio. And what that means is that Venus rules Taurus. And the opposite sign of whatever this, the planet rules is in its detriment. So in this case... Venus in Scorpio is in its detriment, which means that it's not expressing itself in the way that we would think is, is the most productive. Okay. And the reason I would say that this is the case is because Venus is very airy fairy, light hearted. It deals with art, it deals with love, beauty, you know, the aesthetics, which is all, how things look and just everything being in harmony. And what is Scorpio? <laughs> Scorpio is ruled by two heavy planets, Pluto and Mars. And um, so Scorpio is about the underbelly of life. It's about the things that are beneath the surface that m people may not want to acknowledge. It's about um, death. It's about sex. And uh, Venus is about romance, you know? And so it's, it's really like... Um, they're, they're kind of um, colliding a little bit there and not really easily comfortable with one another. But some people are Venus and Scorpio, and I'll talk about what exactly that entails. You may find that you are secretive when it comes to your affections. In other words, you may always hold just a little of yourself in reserve. And if you're watching this for your partner, you may sense that about them. And it can drive a person batty because you just know that they're not really telling you everything that they feel. And you really want to know what is going on in their heads about you and about your relationship. And you can't sometimes pin them down in that sense. And the reason that Venus in Scorpio does this, this is actually a Scorpio trait with the sun sign, with the moon sign. The reason they do this is I feel like it's a sense, this is a type of an illusion that they think it gives them power over you. And obviously I'm speaking as if I'm talking about a loved one of somebody who has Venus and Scorpio. If you are a Venus and Scorpio watching this, realize that when you try to withhold 
affection. A lot of times what will end up happening is that your relationship will not thrive because the other person does not sense that you are really being real with them um, to the full extent. And so you really don't allow that other person to get to know you. You don't really have trust in them. And the relationship only stays at a certain level. Another thing that can happen, and so, and, and this is the, the Pluto influence, the power, the need for power. And the, the need from, for power comes about because for some reason, Scorpio thinks that power is a very important thing. And what I have found is that the greatest demonstration of power is the ability to be vulnerable, is the ability to let other people know that you don't have all the answers and that sometimes you're afraid and sometimes you're insecure. But when you try to act so tough and so immune and invulnerable to anything, I think that that actually works against Venus and Scorpio or anybody with Scorpio. Okay. There can be a heaviness in love. There can be this treatment of love as this all-consuming thing. And for Scorpios, whether it's the moon or sun in Scorpio or Venus, they do tend to feel things very, very intensely. Um, and so they have to realize that not everybody is like them. And some people are actually scared away uh, from that kind of demonstration that can freak people out. They can think, whoa, you know. So you have to have a lighter touch and not take everything so seriously. But that is almost impossible for Venus and Scorpio. Love is everything to them. And they can be very bitter if somebody betrays them or if their affections are not returned. And actually, when you think about the stalker or the obsessive uh, lover, this is that type of mentality where it's, it's just like it becomes an obsession. And I think that's the Pluto influence. But what is needed to understand about this is that it's not love. When it becomes obsession, that is a form of control. Because... Scorpio is a fixed sign. People with Venus and Scorpio, and it, actually I should say a fixed water sign. So the emotions of the water and the fixed nature can create a person who loves not only deeply, but forever or just this long lasting type of a, an emotion. So if something happens, the Venus and Scorpio person just doesn't pick up and move on like it's a conveyor belt. It's it's like they have very strong likes and dislikes. A person with Venus and Scorpio is not going to just move on to the next person uh, with a blink of an eye. And whereas somebody with Venus and Libra or Venus and Gemini might do exactly that. Not Venus and Scorpio. They may hurt for a long time and they may be bitter but they can love for a long time. You know, and an example would be like if they lost their partner to death, um, that it might be, whether it's a man or a woman, they might not want another partner after that person because they are very particular about who the, they fall in love with. They're not just falling in love willy-nilly, you know. So that can indicate a very... It's, it's not just loyalty, it's just a steadfastness within them, you know, constancy in love. They want to consume their lover. They want to become body and soul with that person. And again, that's a, t a type of intensity that may appeal to certain people, but not to others. Some people will be scared off to that type of what they consider obsessiveness. And by the way, I'm not suggesting that everyone with Venus and Scorpio is like a stalker or anything like that, or a sun in Scorpio or anything. I'm not saying that they're stalkers, but I'm talking about the 
this is in the same family that when you're very intense about something, it, it, it can lead to upset obsession if the person does not have a well-rounded life where they just are putting all their emotions and you know all their hopes and dreams on one person that is unhealthy obviously you know and you have to have balance in your life but that's the kind of thing that I'm talking about that can be taken to an extreme if the person is well developed, a higher type of individual, their love, the Venus and Scorpio love can be very idealistic, and they can really sacrifice for the person that they love. They can be very um, high minded about it. And the love is very pure in that sense. However, if Venus is afflicted, which means it would have a lot of hard aspects to it, squares and oppositions. And depending on the conjunction, that can be a, uh, an affliction as well. Um, the There can be excessive, there can be um, sexual preoccupation or the sex part of it can be too emphasized. Scorpio gets a bad rap as being sex- um, what do you call them? Um, maniacs, but that is, that is just ridiculous. Scorpio takes sex seriously. That is what it means. And so they're not, they're not, um, treating sex as a recreational sport. They treat it as something that is really important. And that means that they could be celibate. They don't have to be um, always doing it to make it important in their life. It means that they take it seriously. So this is just for somebody who has an afflicted Venus and Scorpio. They may take this one thing and pervert it and make it into something that is just like this cheap activity and uh, or in some obsessiveness, but on the sexual side instead of the emotional side. In terms of their artistic preferences, because I don't think I mentioned that Venus can also indicate the artistic preferences, the person can have a very dramatic artistic expression. So if somebody is a Venus and Scorp Scorpio painter, I would wager that they would gravitate more to dramatic colors, deep co colors, like a maroon, for instance, which is a, which is, um, a shade of red that is connected to Mars. And that's one of Venus's rulers. I mean, Scorpio's rulers, um, just a very bold expression in their art. But like, let's say they were a filmmaker. It could be like horror movies because, because that is uh, scorpionic. Um, these um, scary movies like Halloween, those type of movies, maybe mysteries. That's something that a Scorpio would love. And Venus and Scorpio may be attracted by the occult. That's because uh, the eighth house that Scorpio rules does deal with these hidden, like the mysteries of life and the, the occult, like astrology, the Tarot, are a part of that. So now let me talk about the sun signs and how they, how they blend with this Venus and Scorpio. If your sun is in Virgo, still waters may run deep. You may have this kind of unemotional side, but in relationships, you're very intense. And so there may be this dichotomy where sometimes you're just um, totally detached, except when you're in a romantic relationship. This is, I think this is a good combination for money, for manifesting money, and actually for managing, saving money, because Scorpio rules the eighth house of other people's money, and um, Virgo rules the sixth house of work. So there can be that ability to take the money that you work for and maybe invest it and make it just 
earn money on itself or uh, things like that. And, oh, and I should have said sensuality too, because Virgo is an earth sign. And so it has that earthiness that we associate with being comfortable with sexuality, although with Virgo, there's almost like this virginal quality. However, when you combine it with uh, Venus and Scorpio, it can be a little bit more willing to be, you know, more sexual in that sense. Um, I, I do think, though, that Virgo people have a total ability that they have that uh, they may not show it to the public, but they have that kind of um, private sexiness already. This just kind of adds to it. If your sun sign is in Libra, you may be more intense, especially in your relationships. And it can like lessen the shallowness that may be prevalent, for instance, for those people who have sun and Venus in Libra. It can soften the jealous tendencies of Venus and Libra while still retaining the intensity of the emotion, the emotional expression and just basic attitudes in love. Maybe the person, maybe the Libra isn't as social as most Librans are. Maybe they're more inclined to having friendships with a close circle of friends rather than just big parties and things like that. That could possibly be the case. I think in general, it gives more gravitas to a person's, uh, to a Libra, son's, uh, a son in Libra's personality, so that they have that sense of um, not just being shallow. And by the way, I'm not, I'm not insulting Librans and saying that they're they're shallow. Actually, Libran people can be very enjoyable companions, and they can be very intelligent to have conversations with. It's just that when I say gravitas, it's just more of a sense of depth, for for lack of a better word. Yeah, you know, depth, because even though Librans can be amusing, they may not be interested in things like the occult, okay? And I know some are, but I'm just saying in general, they may just have, um, like to keep things light a lot of times, and this may make them more serious in general, okay? That's maybe where I'm going with that. And their artistic nature may be even more intense. I, w while I was writing this out, I was thinking about Picasso because I believe his son is in, <laughs> why am I saying is like he's still alive? Uh, his son was in, in Scorpio. Okay. Um, and, you're probably thinking, well, why are you talking about somebody who has a son in Scorpio if you're, this is about son in Libra? But he was, I think he was born kind of close to that cusp between Libra and um, Scorpio. But I'm just talking about him as an artist. And he was, I, I saw this documentary on him and it was so interesting. If you can find it, it was like in two parts. I actually checked it out of the library, but... Um, I can't remember the exact name of it, but he was, he was very prolific. I mean, he was all about art. I mean, he was like the consummate artist. And I did see him, I did see his work at the Art Institute of Chicago. And, you know, a few years ago, and it was like, I couldn't believe how many different styles he had. There were rooms and rooms of his work. I mean, it was overwhelming. But the point is that that Scorpio part of him was like totally consumed by art. If you have this combination, you may be kind of like Picasso. That's what I was going with that. So, um, and it also can lend a gravitas to your art. So it can be more intense and dramatic. Okay. If your son is in Scorpio. <laughs> If your son is in Scorpio and you have a Venus in Scorpio, you have to have a lighter touch. You have to watch out for that obsessiveness. You have to 
practice radical forgiveness. Don't hold grudges. If somebody disses you, bless them. Don't be vengeful. Um, be more open. You are a private person. That is cool. But if you're in relationship with somebody, you have to be able to share with them. Share your emotions more. Even the ones that don't make you look so great. Even if it doesn't come easy to you, practice trust. You know, trust that whatever you tell somebody, however you act, that you will not be betrayed. Do not be too suspicious of other people's intentions. Don't be jealous, okay? Don't be um, possessive of the other person, and which is a form of control, is really about control. You may act like, oh, I just want this person all to myself. But really, you want the person to kind of bow down to you and to not to be under your spell. Okay. And that is not okay. You are a very devoted person. Okay. You are very committed to your partner. And when you love, it's on, it's really on. There's nobody who probably can love as deeply as a Scorpio that I can think of in the Zodiac. So you go. But just be more open to your partner. Don't, you know, one thing is do not try to test your partner. That's a big one with Scorpios. They play these games, you know, like, and, and also the vengefulness. That has to go. High-minded Scorpios are, like, really cool because I knew, I was friends with a woman who was a triple Scorpio, and she was like, she was not willing to, you know, she, she was, um, attracted to somebody that was in a relationship and she was not going to deal with him as long he was, as long as he was in that relationship, she would never think of cheating with him. And not that I don't even think he was trying to do so, but she was just a very high minded person. And that is the higher version of Scorpio. Uh, um, Scorpios have a lot of morals when they're on the high ground, but there are some Scorpios who they like, you know, they like to be in the seedy underbelly, you know, and it may be like kind of this thrill because some of you are thrill seekers. Okay. And you like, you get off on the darkness. But just remember that the the whole point of our existence is to become lighter and lighter. And the darkness is ignorance. So um, even though you're not afraid of the darkness, that doesn't mean you have to embrace it. Embrace the light and always be high-minded. Don't treat people like possessions understand that they have their own, they're free agents, they can do whatever the heck they want. You don't own anybody. And always forgive. Even if it mean even if you really are still hurting, what it means is you're not going to take revenge, and you're not going to badmouth them. And you're going to wish them well. It may take you a long time to get there, but always be open to it because Scorpio can be very stubborn being a fixed sign, especially as a water sign. You know, it's like memories just, <laughs> you know, like they say, what is that saying about um, a memory like an elephant or something? I think that is the most bizarre saying. You know, what does that have to do with an elephant's memory? It just doesn't make any sense to me. But just that, that tendency to hold on to things too long, grudges and things like that. But again, there's nobody that's probably more devoted than a, than a Scorpio. Okay, Sun and Sagittarius. This can increase your interest in the occult, um, make you very interested in the mysteries of life. It can make you less of an open book because... Uh, Sagittarians are like bright-eyed puppy dogs that 
you know, kind of just innocently tell the stories of their lives and all these people, you, you get a, a Scorpio person taking notes because they're going to have a dossier <laughs> at some point. But um, that might make you more guarded, but in some cases, this can make you more, have more depth to your, to your personality because Sagittarians tend to really like their freedom and they, that can lead to shallowness sometimes because you don't want to get too heavy, man. You want to be light and just keep it fun and all that, you know, and this makes you a little bit more deep but it lightens the Venus in Scorpio. It makes it less possessive, less vindictive, less, you know, just more fun and, and yet devoted at the same time. With Capricorn, I, I wrote down it waters the dryness, you know, um, Capricorn being an earth sign, not being very emotional. This can add to the emotions. It can add to the spirituality or the mysticism and make the person, the Capricorn person, much more interested in the occult or reincarnation, things like that. I just thought of something. Now, maybe some of you think this is random, but Elvis Presley was a Capricorn. I don't know if his Venus was in Scorpio, though, but I, I was surprised to learn that he had read the uh, autobiography of a yogi by Paramahansa Yogananda. And um, I don't know if you read the Bhagavad Gita, but he was reading these Eastern um, mystical books. And I even was surprised to, to learn that he had experimented with psychedelics because he was such a, you know, known for drinking and taking pills and things like that. But he actually had that mystical side of him. Um, but actually, you know, to tell you the truth, I remember reading that, uh, Cary Grant, uh, took acid. Can you, can you imagine Cary Grant on acid, um, to cure him, himself of alcoholism? So these Capricorns, Capricorn can be a deep sign in and of itself, but with Venus and Scorpio, it adds to that, that desire to delve into things like that. And it can add more sensuality, just like with Virgo, because it's an earth sign. There can be this thing, but it will be like almost this mystical experience for the Capricorn person. So anyway, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, if you'd like a private reading, I have a few of my offerings and links provided below just to give you an idea of some of my services. So you can scroll down for that. Otherwise, take care. Bye.